Good morning. It was indeed 20 years ago on the 20 20 years ago on the 23rd of April on a day very very much like this it was a cold spring that year too uh, that I was ordained in the Abbey Church uh, at St. John's Abbey in Collegeville and it's, it's, it makes me very very happy today on this anniversary to have two people with us today who were there and actually saw it happen. Karen was there and Sister Lori was there. Um, so uh, that's why I wanted them to also share in this special day in my life and in the life of the church. Um, you may have recognized the collect that I prayed at the conclusion of the prayers of the people. Karen has heard it thousands of times. Um, it is the collect that's prayed on Good Friday. It is prayed at the great vigil of Easter and it's prayed at any and all ordinations. Um, and it is a colic that lifts us all up and the whole church. And, and I just want to say, I'm not going to preach, but I just want to say a, a few words about things that make today special for me in addition to having dear friends as guests with us. Um, the Book of Common Prayer indicates that there are four orders of ministry in the church. They're wrong, actually. The prayer book should be corrected. There are five. And all of those orders are represented here today. The first order is the laity, and that's all of you. Um, and Susan, who came forward and read the prayers of the people for us, and that is the first and the greatest order in the church. The next, I would say, is the order of the religious, and Sister Lori represents that community. Then we move on to the order of the diaconate, and we are represented this morning with our deacon, Maureen. Then the presbyters, that would be me, the priests come along. And finally, um, the order of the bishop, and Canon Olson, a layperson herself, represents Bishop Loya this morning as a canon of the church. A canon is not something that you can fire and shoot at people. That has two ends. Some have suggested firing Canon Olson in the past, but uh, far be it from me. But so Bishop Loya is with us this morning, not only in spirit, but also uh, in his representative is Karen. And so all of those orders come together and together we are the church. And there's another important thing happening today. And, and I held on to it, secret stuff. I kept a secret from you. Last Sunday, which was April 16th, was the 160th anniversary of Bishop Henry Whipple, the first Bishop of Minnesota, signing the documents that organized St. Mary's Parish as a part of what was then known as the Protestant Episcopal Church in the United States. And what makes that so important to me is that I am the eighth generation in my order to represent the church in this place. You have eight generations of history in this place, in this very building. There's not a whole lot of places that are in the same building with people sitting in the same pews on the same spot for 160 years in this diocese. And I am well aware of the fact that you all have been here long before I came. And if it is God's pleasure and will, you will all be here long after I too am gone. That is what is important in the church. From that journey down the road to Emmaus with Jesus in that breaking of the bread where he became known to them, you have been receiving Christ and knowing Christ in the breaking of bread in this place at this altar for 160 years. And it has been my great, great privilege, honor, and pleasure to have spent the last 11 of those years with you here. That's what makes today special. It's not just about me but it's about all of us and who we are. We are the body of Christ. We are Jesus Christ's hands and feet. We, like Christ, are wounded. We, like Christ, have been raised up. We are Christ's eyes and ears in the world, and it is our job given to us in the Great Commission from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to carry on that work, and we carry it on together. I can't do this alone. I can't do this alone. And one other thing I just want to say, we'll soon be breaking that bread at this altar. And every Sunday when I celebrate the Eucharist, I say, the Lord be with you, and you say, and also with you, that's just saying hi. But then there's something really important. 
because when I say lift up your hearts, that's what I'm asking you. Do you want me to keep going? Do you really want to do this? Do you really believe this is special? And when you say we lift them up to the Lord, you give me the permission to go ahead and act, to call on God to be present in the breaking of that bread. If you didn't say that, actually, I have to stop. I can't keep going. Bishop Jelinek taught me this very importantly. And if you watch, and some, some of you I know do, when I say lift up your hearts and you say we lift them up to the Lord, I will always bow to you because it is only through the voice of the people that I can do what I do as a priest. So you are absolutely the vital cornerstone of the church, which is why we sang Christ has made the sure foundation this morning that we all together build this place up. And by the way, that also happened to be the processional hymn that was sung at my ordination 20 years ago. <laughs> But I just wanted to say that because that I think is really, really important because sometimes we set the priest up to be too important. And Bishop Loya and I and Bishop Brian and I and Bishop Jim and I also talked about this, that, that we become like the, the ducks in the shooting gallery, that when things go well, everybody loves us. And when things don't go so well, they take some pot shots at us. But the, the church is you. All of us together are the church. All of us together are called to a common mission. And that's what's really important. And I know um, Ken and Karen is going to speak a little bit more about discipleship and some other ways that we engage not only with each other and with the world, but how we deepen our understanding as disciples of Jesus Christ into his work, how we continue to break open the bread to know him and for him to know us. And the communion is that wonderful place where all that comes together. So thank you. Thank you for your witness in this place for 160 years. And thank you for your witness to my ordination 20 years ago. And thank you for your witness to the living Christ in your presence here this morning. I don't have anything else much to tell you uh, because it's been a busy few weeks and it's time to kind of just relax a little bit. And that is also a good thing and continue to celebrate. Um, I will ask if there are any Birthdays or wedding anniversaries to be marked by prayer and God's blessing. Huh, it's just my ordination today, so well, we're doing enough about all of that. Then let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God, 